Okay, in this tutorial we're going to go through the parts of the digestive system. So we're going to look at the mouth and the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, which the first part of the small intestine is called the duodenum, all right, the rest of the small intestine, sometimes called the ileum, all right, and the large intestine or colon, all right, and actually the anus too. So food, as it goes through our digestive system, it goes from the mouth, down the esophagus, into the stomach, from the stomach, it goes into the uh, small intestine, all right, or the duodenum first, the, the first part of the small intestine, into the rest of the small intestine, through here, into the large intestine, all right, and out the anus. So, guys, uh, in this example, this is actually a, a website, it's an animation, it's, it's uh, great fun. Um, and you can eat these different types of foods and look at what happens to them. Now I'm going to do baked beans, because baked beans kind of have a little bit of everything in them. If we select baked beans, they've got starch, protein, fat, a little bit of vitamins and minerals, and roughage. Roughage is just uh, what we call fiber, dietary fiber. Um, so same, same name, uh, different name for the same thing. Um, so that's why I'm going to choose baked beans. But you can, I'll put the, the web link, the, the, the address of this website in the description of this video. So you can go to this video and have a go yourself and eat the ice cream or the fish or these cakes and, um, or the apple. Anyway, let's go, let's eat. I'm hungry. Alright, so in the mouth, hum, chomp, chomp, chomp. Alright, uh, basically the baked beans are first. The teeth smash up the baked beans into mush. So that's a type of physical or mechanical digestion, basically just breaking them up into smaller pieces. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Now, in the uh, saliva are special enzymes. These enzymes are actually called amylase. amylase. Um, and this amylase, the special enzyme, uh, helps to break down the starch into its chemical components. So starch is broken down into sugar. So uh, just a tip, something that might even help at the senior levels, enzymes often end in A's. If you see the A's on the end, it's an enzyme. So amylase breaks starch uh, into sugar. Now the, the mucus is also really important because it helps us to swallow the food. You'll have, uh, if you've ever swallowed a chip and it was still quite dry, you'll, you'll know it gets caught in the throat and oh, it feels really awful. Um, so guys, making sure our food is nice and moist um, helps us to swallow it without, you know, scratching the sides of our, our throat and our esophagus. So in the mouth, we had physical digestion, breaking it up into smaller pieces, and we also get chemical digestion, the enzymes breaking up, the amylase breaking up the starch into those smaller glucose particles. All right, now, now we go from the mouth down the esophagus. Now, food doesn't just fall down the esophagus like it looked like there. Um, the esophagus actually has muscles in it that contract, squeezing the food down the tube, down the esophagus. They squeeze, those muscles contract in a sort of like a wave-like pattern, or like if you could imagine squeezing all of the toothpaste out of a tube of toothpaste, just starting at one end, squeezing and moving your hand along. Um, that's how it kind of works, sort of the, the food gets pushed down by muscle, muscle contractions that move down the esophagus. Um, so that's what pushes the food down. You can try that out. Try eating something upside down. You'll find it actually works. It's not really a big problem. Um, the body can handle it because it's actually pushing the food down. It doesn't just fall down into the stomach. Cool. Once we get into the stomach, what happens here? Well, in the stomach, firstly, the uh, food gets mixed with digestive juices. So this is the stomach churning. It's kind of contractions are helping to mush up the food and mix it. And again, that's a type of physical um, or mechanical digestion, um, and it, it smushes up the food and, and helps mix it with those digestive juices. Now, the digestive juices contain, contain enzymes and acids which help break down foods, especially proteins. So the enzymes that break down proteins are called proteases. So the A's, remember, is the, the sign that it's an enzyme. Protease is the enzyme that breaks down protein. So a whole bunch of proteases help break down the protein into its chemical components. So again, we've got physical digestion, the churning, and we've got chemical digestion, the protease enzymes, breaking down the protein into their chemical components into amino acids. So there we go, enzymes breaking the protein into its amino acids.
Once the food has sort of been digested, it, you know, once it's ready to move on, there's actually a little sort of gatekeeper here, a little sphincter. It's called the pyloric sphincter, and um, basically that relaxes, it opens up to let the, uh, the food move through. Now you don't need to know the name of that one, um, but that, there's a muscle there that relaxes to let the food through once it's ready. Alright, through we go. Okay, so from there into the duodenum. The duodenum is the start of the small intestine. Alright, in the duodenum. So in here, basically, digestion uh, still carries on. We still finish off the last little, the last parts of digestion. So in the duodenum, a whole bunch, a whole lot more enzymes um, are added to help break down um, any of those food particles that aren't quite broken down all the way yet. So we've got protease enzymes that break down the protein into amino acids. We've got the amylase enzymes that break down starch into sugar. And we've got a lipase, like lipid lipase enzyme that breaks down lipids or fats into, into their chemical components, which are glycerol and fatty acids. So here we go. Enzymes, the lip, the, the amylase breaking down the, the sugar, the, sorry, the, the starch into sugar. The proteases broke down the protein into their amino acids. And then here are the fat. Firstly, we have the stuff called bile. So bile is something that's added from the liver. In the liver, we've got a special part of the liver called the gallbladder. Now you're expected to know this one, so, so pay attention. Um, in the liver, there's a special part of the liver called the gallbladder that secretes bile and it adds it into the duodenum and the bile um, essentially acts as a detergent just like when you're washing dishes detergent helps to break the fat up into tiny little droplets so the bile secreted from the liver helps uh, in the duodenum helps break down the fat um, into little tiny droplets so you can see here the bile breaking up the the lipid into tiny little fat droplets. Now we get enzymes, uh, fat enzymes, which are called lipases. So just run through those enzymes again. We had um, amylase, breaks down carbohydrates into sugar. Proteases, or, or the protease enzymes, break down the protein into amino acids. And the lipase enzymes break down lipids, or fats, um, into their glycerol and amino acids, their chemical components. Fantastic. Now the, the bile, which just helped break the fat into smaller droplets, comes from the liver. But the liver and also the pancreas are two organs. The food doesn't actually go through them. So they're not sort of part of the digestive system where the food actually goes through them, but they are involved. They are part of the digestive system because they add enzymes here to the duodenum. They add enzymes and things that help digest the food at the start of the small intestine here in the duodenum. So these lipases here are going to break up the fat droplets, breaking them up into their glycerols and their fatty acids, those chemical components. So on we go to the ileum. The, uh, the rest of the small intestine. So in here, basically all of the food has now been broken down. So sugars, proteins, and fats are now a, a tiny enough particles. Now what that means is they've actually been broken into their chemical components. So we don't actually have any fat or sugar or protein left. We've actually broken it down into, we've got uh, the carbohydrates have been broken into, into sugars, so we do have sugars, but the fats have been broken down into glycerol and fatty acids, and the protein has been broken down into amino acids. We've still got a few vitamins and minerals and things left in here too, and a little bit of water. So we've got the carbohydrates now been broken down into sugar, the fats have been broken down into glycerols and fatty acids, um, and the protein has been broken down into amino acids. Now, together with the vitamins and minerals, all of those, those food particles, the ones that have been, uh, the chemical components, are now absorbed into the bloodstream by small finger-like projections called villi. These are small folds on the surface of the small intestine that help to absorb food. So here we go, all those food particles being absorbed, and they'll go into the bloodstream and travel all around the body to feed all of our cells. Basically all that's left behind is the undigested waste, which is largely basically just roughage and water, dietary fiber and water. So fiber is the stuff in our diet that we can't digest, 
but it's actually really important because it helps to to sticks with the water here to give our uh, our wastes here a, a nice a, a good consistency so that we don't get constipated or we don't get diarrhea and it also helps to kind of clean out the intestines as it goes through so that we don't get n nasty chemicals sticking to the sides and things like that and so it's actually been shown if you have if you have a, a a diet that's high in dietary fiber or roughage you're less likely to get um, colon cancer um, or, or um, uh, cancer in the large intestine because it helps to flush out the nasties Alright, so on we go from the small intestine through there, all that absorption, absorbing all those nutrients into the bloodstream, and then here in the colon, well, what's left, really? Don't we just get rid of it now? Well, no, basically there's still water in there, and we want to recapture some of that. We want to make sure we get some of that water back. So in the large intestine, as we go through the large intestine, um, as we travel through the colon, remember colon, just another name for the large intestine, um, some of the water is reabsorbed. So we absorb some of that water, um, and so it's when we get to the end here, basically now this is the, the consistency of, of feces of poo. So through the large intestine, absorbing some of the, the leftover water, and then in the anus is basically what remains is basically the indigestible solid waste, mainly fibre, um, but some of the other some other few bits and pieces in there maybe that we couldn't digest, and they build up in the anus um, or, or in the rectum here. Um, and essentially this is a place where we can store the waste um, and then go to the bathroom when it's convenient. Now there's a limit to how much this can hold and if you, if you try not to go eventually um, it'll come out anyway because it'll, it'll build up and you won't be able to hold it back. Um, so we've got another, another the anus here is a, is a sphincter, um, it controls the, the exit of the waste and it's, it's largely under voluntary control, we can kind of control when we release the wastes. But it's also partially under involuntary control, which means that if we if we um, don't listen to our body and we don't go, eventually it will it will take over control and it will go whether we want to or not. Um, so the last step here is basically the waste is pushed through the anus, um, and that's basically when we go to the bathroom. So that's it, guys. That's guys. That's the uh, the journey through the uh, digestive system. Alright, um, so back to the start here, our journey from the mouth down the esophagus into the stomach, into the small intestine, the du duodenum. This is where enzymes um, and bile are added from the pancreas um, and the liver. The liver, the gallbladder, part of the liver adds the bile, which just helps break the fat into smaller droplets. Alright, it's also where we had uh, enzymes that break down the the, the proteases, which break down the protease enzymes, which break down proteins, the lipase enzymes, which break down lipids, um, the amylase, we also have, we've also got that in our saliva, but the amylase, which breaks down the, the carbohydrates into sugar. All right, and the small intestine here is where the food is absorbed into the, the bloodstream, the large intestine where um, uh, essentially any water is absorbed, uh, and then the anus or the rectum where the, the food builds up and is released. So go check out this website, uh, have a go yourselves, it's, it's lots of fun, um, and it'll help you know, learn for your test the, the different parts of the digestive system. Cool, that's it guys, I hope that helped, um, and good luck for your test.